Hello, YouTube Thrivers, and we are live. Hello, hello from chilly Melbourne. Hence why I've got my fluffy blue jacket on. Having a, a blue day today, not blue as in down, just blue as in colour. Hello, everybody. Let me know that you're there and that you can hear and that you can see me okay. All right. Let's just see some people coming in. All right. Hello, hello, hello from Melbourne. Let me know where you're from. All right, just having a coffee here. It's 9 a.m. in the morning in Melbourne and just getting ready for a really great conversation that we're going to be having about these four mistakes that you can make in your healing, which are such common mistakes that nearly everybody makes in their healing. But uh, I want to help you out, so you're definitely not going to be making them. Okay, so let me know that you are here and I'm going to get going on this and uh, let you know what these four mistakes are and go into depth about them so that we can have a conversation about them as well. Okay, let me just get my notes up so that we can go into this. All right, we started an hour later last week and maybe we just haven't got people. No, we haven't. I can't see you guys just to make sure that I am. Let me just check in with the support team. I just want to make sure that I am up and you can. Uh, okay, now we've got some people coming in. I just want to make sure that I do have contact with you. All right, do we have... Violet, are you around? Let me know if you're around, sweetheart, just so that we can check in. All right. I don't know if my feed's not going or what's happening. Sometimes, yeah, there's been some funny things happening in. All right, now we've got people connecting. I don't know if there's a lag. Please, somebody out there, let me know if you can see or hear me. Okay, good, good. Maybe there's a fair bit of a lag. It's kind of taken a bit of a time to connect. That's okay. Great. Fantastic. All right. Violet, do we have you here with us? My beautiful MTE moderator. Okay, great. Great. All right. We're good. We're good to go. All right, so today that is exactly what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about those four common things that can absolutely make it extremely difficult for you to heal, even though you think that they are the right things to do to heal. And they're the four easiest mistakes to make about narcissistic abuse recovery. So let's get going on the first one, because this is the one that nearly everybody does. And it's the one that I did so much as well. And it is trying to learn everything about narcissists. Now, let me know if that's kind of still... Hi, Faye. Faye, you're here. Okay. Let me know if that's what you've done or if you're still doing. Because you know what? This is the thing. Narcissism is a phenomena. Narcissists are a phenomena. They're not like normal people. And at first, it's absolutely fascinating. And at first, it's actually really important to understand that you're not going mental, you're not the only person in the world who's gone through this insanity, and that there is a name for this that is very, very important at the beginning. But you know what? And I actually did a whole presentation on this. There is, okay, Lino, I don't want to do an update right now. Don't you love that when your computer says, how about we do an update? And you're like, no, I'm busy. Go away. <laughs> All right. Computers can be quite narcissistic. They want your attention sometimes and it's just not time. So, um, okay. The thing is with a narcissist, there is only really one thing that you need to understand and that is that it's impossible to have a relationship with somebody who doesn't share your values and doesn't have the desire or the capacity to share your values. And the values of healthy relationship are kindness, integrity, care, teamwork, 
and the ability to build solutions with you. If somebody doesn't have those things and narcissists absolutely don't, well, then you can't have a healthy relationship with them. You can't fix them. You can't change their mind. You can't get them to change their character. That's really all you need to learn about narcissists. Because then the thing is, is we're learning to learn about, heal and unravel ourselves. Because this is not about what happened to me. We can go into what happened to me at the start, but it needs to go to why. Why am I hooked in? What am I needing to learn or heal here so I'm not hooked in? And every single time that we stay focused on learning all there is to learn about narcissists, we're denying ourselves our own thriver recovery by turning inward, self-partnering, finding those parts of ourselves that are broken and unhealed and trauma bonded and releasing them, up-leveling them and healing them to a solid self so that we're not. Does that make sense? Okay, Melissa, hello from the USA. Okay. Now, I promise you this. I've been in this game of narcissistic abuse recovery for 13 years uh, and for 11 of those at a global level. I have never seen anybody who is who is fixated on learning and learning and learning about narcissists rather than turning inwards to heal themselves. I've never seen them recover, not one. And also too, what I have seen is that it doesn't matter how much you learn about narcissists, it's not going to help you avoid them in the future. I promise you that. In fact, it's a bit like If you were driving your car down the road and you started sliding off the road, if you lost control of your car, if you're fixated on the tree, you're going to smash straight into the tree. Quantum law is very absolute. Source your life and soul together. Grant you more of who you're being. If you are being in the vibration and the fascination of narcissists over and over and over and over and over and over again, more and more narcissists will keep coming into your human experience. It truly is the truth. So how do we get narcissists out of our experience and heal from them is to turn inwards, recover ourselves so that narcissistic abuse is no longer our reality and narcissists are no longer our reality because we're always unconsciously accepting and participating in levels of human experiences in complete match to who we're being. So if we keep learning about it and learning about it and learning about it, we see them everywhere, we try to avoid them, we hide out from them, we keep attracting them in, we keep having these experiences and they keep coming. We don't want that. Does this make sense? It's very, and look, it's hard. It's an addiction. This is the thing. You know, when you've been narcissistically abused, you're in peptide addictions anyway You're addicted to the narcissist. You're addicted to the trauma bonding. You're addicted to the pain. You're addicted to the betrayals and the smashing of your soul and the peptides and the chemicals that that's creating. That's why you can't stop thinking about it. So it's very natural to think if I learn everything about narcissists that I'm being proactive and I'm doing something to help myself, but then you're actually getting addicted to learning about narcissists. So it's like if you were walking down the mural of life, And everything exists in this mural. Whatever you are focused on is exactly the mural of life that you're inviting into your into your hologram, into your life experience, which is going to keep being the generation of your life. Okay. All right. So let's just get clear about number one. Just Look, most definitely tick off your boxes. There's a really helpful article that I have that can help you right from the get-go. Am I with a narcissist? Am I am I with a narcissist? Melanie Tony Irvins, am I with a narcissist? And it will help you get really clear. And I promise you this, your narcissist is not that interesting. They all come out of the same cereal box. They've all been cut by the same cookie cutter. They all covert, overt, 
red, blue, green, black, whatever category you want to put them into, they all pretty much do the same thing because that's what a submerged true self and an ego run amok does. They all do the same thing. They say the same stuff. They act the same way, whether they're hot, cold, covert, overt, altruistic, more obvious, they all do the same things. So once you kind of get that, you know what you're dealing with. And when you know what you're dealing with, what you're needing to deal with more so is yourself, is heal yourself beyond this. Okay. We have kind of a little, you know, rule in, well, it's not a rule, it's a guide. And it's really helpful in our Thriver community after the first week of kind of learning about the bus that hit you. After that, 90% you focus, 10% learning about narcissists at the very, very most. It's the 90-10 rule. It's very, very important in Thriver Recovery. Okay. So for those of you who have never got into Thriver Recovery, what I would love you to do is go to my free webinar, which is melanietoniaevans.com forward slash free webinar the one word, because it's going to take you through this and explain it very deeply to you why the inner healing work is so necessary. And it's going to take you through the first step of that to actually experience it in your body for yourself. So I cannot recommend enough any of you who are still stuck in learning all about narcissists and you haven't taken your soul, your sanity, your life force and your power back yet in your body, which is the only place it can come from, I really want you to do that, okay? It's a free event. It's two hours out of your time and it's going to help you so, so much. And it's going to talk to you deeply about the 10-step healing process, which is the Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Program, which is the signature program in this community. And that's melanietoniaevans.com forward slash N-A-R-P. That is how myself and thousands of others in this community have healed for real from this very powerfully, very quickly. Okay. All right. Now, let's go on to the second one, shall we? I hope that that one's made sense. It's about letting go of that addiction. I'm going to keep learning and researching and Googling and looking up and, you know, I, I'm I'm going to start learning and healing myself. Because I just before I do go on to number two, I just want to finish off number one with this. Imagine if you had a little child with you and this little kid got hit by a car this child you adore because this is a metaphor for your inner shattered being and this little child is hit by a car and she's broken or he and bleeding out and you just dumped them and ran after the driver because fundamentally when you've been smashed by narcissistic abuse or you're being smashed by narcissistic abuse and you're just focused on the driver the narcissist, instead of turning inwards to your inner being to help your inner being recover from this getting hit by a truck, by this soul rape, you're not going to get better. That's the most powerful metaphor I can give you, okay? I really want you to get that peace. It's very logical and I have never seen a recovery happen but from somebody just running after the driver. Not one. Okay. All right. Let's have a look at our second our second one because this is so, so, so important. All right. Our second one is This is huge and this is sometimes a difficult conversation, this one. It's not an easy conversation to have, but it's everything. Hanging on to victimhood. What does that mean? Absolutely. You've been victimized. You've been hurt. You've been treated horrifically. You've been ripped off. You've been smashed. You've been lied to. You've been betrayed. But if we hang on to that, what does that mean from a quantum perspective? Quantum law is as absolute as gravity. We know with gravity what goes up, what goes down. 
quantum law is this, so within, so without. Whoever you are being means how life is going to present itself to you. So if we're being a victim, what does it mean? What it means is this. It means that people are not going to feel sorry for you. And you know that when you're victimized and you're screaming out about what that other person has done to you and what they have done to you and you're in the vibration of that, people don't get it. They don't come to support you. You don't start having your life falling into place. You don't get the right solicitor. You don't get the right judge. You get smashed in court. People turn their backs on you. You keep meeting more people to victimize you. Authorities turn against you. You you lose everything. Nothing goes right for you. Now, if this wasn't the case, I wouldn't be telling you this. I don't make up the quantum laws and none of us do. They just are. And the quantum law is absolute that if you're determined to stay a victim, It means that you're going to continue to have a life that is limited, very, very painful, very traumatizing and very victimized. So it doesn't work. But there is something that does work. And what does work is, and we adopted in the Thriver Way to Heal, it's the radical personal responsibility where we say that if the trauma is in my being, it's mine. Doesn't matter how it got there. Doesn't matter what happened out there? It does, but that's not the focus. The focus is the trauma is in my body. It's now my responsibility to deal with it. Responsibility is not blame. And this is where people get very, very stuck in the whole victim shaming, blaming. You're victim shaming and blaming, right? That's the label that some people have given my work. And I don't care whether they say that or not, because I know that we have thousands upon thousands of people who have liberated and are living their thriver life beyond any level that they ever have, even before abuse and even if abuse is all they've ever known, because of adopting radical personal responsibility, which is as a child I was helpless. Absolutely. If I had traumatizing, unconscious and even codependent parents that didn't know how to reflect back to me the tools to become whole and to grow up to a healthy level of love, approval, survival and security for myself, which is virtually no parent, right? As a child, we were helpless to get to that place. But as adults, we're not. And I promise you, people like myself who have had complete serial breakdowns, who were told they would never recover and that there was no hope for them medically or from a psychological standpoint of ever getting better, that's not the truth. So I can say this with absolute and utter confidence, that when we turn inwards and we change the conversation around from what he or she did to me to what is my soul learning and healing in this, and we self-partner with love and we turn inwards and we say to our beautiful inner being, all right, I know you're shattered and I know you're traumatized, but rather than stay angry and resentful and a victim, which is only beating you up even more, because every time I run after the car and I say how disgusting that you hit me, that poor shattered inner being that needs our love and our healing knows no difference between what I'm saying to the driver or what I'm saying to it. It's all abandonment and anger and resentment and pain that only kills ourselves even more. It's like taking poison every day and expecting the other person to drop dead. It's killing you. So victimization does not work. And in our beautiful community, 100%, we absolutely hold people, we validate them. And in the Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Program, we have a forum of thousands of people from all over the world where you work with thrivers who and also moderators and the MTE team, and we're all about, okay, we're actually going to give you a code of conduct and we call it ECHO, Empowered Code of Healthy Outreach, so that you're not staying in your victimized peptides. You're learning how to share and ask for what you need and get solutions to your healing that are going to empower you and get you out of victimization into your magnificence, 
into your healing, your power, and your true thriver recovery. We're not going to let you wallow in your victimization. You can share, you can be hurt, but we're going to give you solution. And you would know those of you that you might have got on abuse forums and the victimization is so toxic and so rife and so horrific that it's awful and nobody's healing. And there are people that have been there for 5 and 10 and 15 years and they're saying, well, it's too late for me. My life's ruined. It's smashed. It can never get better because I'm a perpetual victim. But the best I can do now is warn people. What's that doing? It's not doing anything. You know, but yet when you come to the Thriver community, we say to you, you're not just going to heal despite what happened to you. You're going to heal and thrive because of what happened to you. Because this is probably the first time in your life that you've been smashed to your knees and you have to turn inwards to recover and heal and grow up you. Those parts that were your normal, you didn't know they were unconscious, you didn't know they were whole yet, and a narcissist came, found them targeted and smashed them to pieces, made the unconscious so conscious there's no missing it now because life doesn't go on as normal until you turn inwards, self-partner and heal you. Okay? So I want you to really understand that. And I know you know what victimization is all about because the first four years of me trying to get out and get away, I was the perpetual victim. I was a really righteous person. I was really about, you know, he's a disgusting, pathological, very sick narcissist. I'm just an innocent, really lovely person who was just trying to love him. And he destroyed my life and took my money and nearly killed me and you know, and the thing goes on and on and on. And I nearly died in that model. And it wasn't until on my last line of life force, and I had the epiphany that this isn't actually about him. This is actually about healing me. And if he hadn't showed up in my experience to smash these parts of me that were codependent, that were looking for a love, approval, survival and security outside of myself who believed I wasn't lovable and I wasn't worthy and I was never enough and even deeper beliefs I don't deserve to exist and all these things I ended up finding and healing. If he hadn't smashed me to my knees, I would have never have released myself, not from him, from me, those parts of me that were not my true self. Hence why I have the most amazing life now. I am a poster child for thriving. I live this every day. And you couldn't give me $10 billion to go back to life before narcissistic abuse because it was nothing like this is now. All right. So, Holly, you're saying I've been alone for 20 years. I'm a magnet for people who were on me. I need to heal. God bless you. Holly, you can heal. Once you heal that inside stuff that has been unconscious, it's and it's not that we're bad people, you know, and then the victim shamer, blamer, people who go, you're victim shaming, I'm blaming, you're saying we're bad people. No, I'm not saying you're bad people. I'm saying you've had deep ingrained inner trauma that you got through past lives, your genetic makeup and your childhood that is unresolved. And what happens with those deep unresolved traumas, you keep attracting more of the same. So if love equals people who betray me, people who leave me, people who annihilate me, if that's the unresolved trauma, that's what keeps coming. And therefore, as Holly does, then you go, well, I'm going to be alone because if I'm alone, I don't have to go through that again. And that's actually not ever what your soul or source intended for you. Your soul or source intended you to wake up out of the trance and stop thinking that it's an outside deal, that it's an inside trauma imprint program that is so within, so without quantum law creating more of the same. You don't have to change 8 billion people. You only need to change yourself. Then everything changes. You will only accept and participate in a level of love that matches your inner love code. That's the truth. Okay? And this is not a logical deal. We can try and think this to the cows come home, but your inner subconscious programs are not logical. They're created precognitive. 
whether it be through genetic makeup, past life energetic imprints, or as a child before you were even in beta brainwave, where you're in theta brainwave, which is all unconscious, everything gets in and there's no filter saying that's a good message, that's a bad message, yes to this, no to that. It all has just penetrated your inner being. That's why we have to do it at a deeper way to get it out. And I just want to say to you again, to understand this deeper and learn how that's done for real, please come into my free webinar, melanietoniaevans.com forward slash free webinar. Write it down, melanietoniaevans.com forward slash free webinar. Okay. Because you need to turn this whole story around 180 degrees. Uh, you've got to turn it around from the powerless victimization of it's all going on out there to take your power back to say in my center of influence, which is my inner being and self, that's where my power is. And the great thing is, is you're always available for yourself. You don't have to chase around and find yourself. You're there to change you and change everything. Okay. Does this make sense? Is this making sense? Okay. All right. I hope that this helps. All right. Let's have a look at our next one. Oh, and this is big as well. They're all so big. No. The third one that's not going to help you heal. And you may think it, it will and people will tell you it will, but it doesn't. It's about going over the stories of the injustice to whoever will listen to you, whether it's a friend, whether it's a therapist. I'm going to explain why. Now, at the beginning, especially if you've been that sort of person, my life's great. I don't want anybody to think that my life is awful. Is anybody here like that? Well, you've been really, really trying to, you know, present to family and friends that my life's good. This isn't going on at all. And maybe also too, you know, okay, now somebody's just asking, I can't read your name, how to release the trauma. Nobody seems to understand anything about CPTSD. In this community, absolutely, we completely, completely heal CPTSD. Come into my free webinar or go to melanietonievans.com forward slash N A. RP, Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Program, that program absolutely clears up, heals completely, releases the trauma, reprograms CPTSD. I am living proof of that. And thousands of others in this community are as well. So I want you to know 100% the Thrive Away to Heal, Heal CPTSD, fibromyalgia, adrenal malfunction, anxiety, depression, agoraphobia, all of the symptoms melt away, all of them. Okay, you don't have to live with them. They can go. All right, so back to the sharing about what happened to you. Now, at the start, as I said, especially if you've been kind of, you know, trying to put on a perfect persona or maybe you know, like I was, I'd had a lot of failed relationships in my past and it was like, oh God, people are just going to go, Melanie, you're a failure. Look at you. Here you go again. Another failed relationship. So, you know, I'd try and pretend everything was okay and I'd even justify things and, you know, and then eventually the writing is on the wall so badly. And of course, when you start getting horrifically abused and smeared and set upon and triangulated and betrayed and have your assets and things stolen from you and all the horrible, horrible things that happen, well, you have to come clean. You kind of come out, you know, and um, and at first that's a really good thing. It, it, of course it is to be honest with people and tell them what's really going on and give people the opportunity to support you. 
but I really want you to know this. If you're going to a therapist every week and you're just going on and 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 on about what happened to you with, you know, people that you're meeting or people that maybe know the narcissist or whatever, you're just going on and on and on and on and on and on. We have a thing which is known as peptide addiction and peptide addiction means that you are literally getting addicted to the chemicals that your brain is producing in your hypothalamus that match your victimization. So what happens is if you keep re-cementing what happened to you without an inner shift on your inner programs that are actually keeping you hooked into and co-generating that program in your life, if you don't take the responsibility, personal radical responsibility to target and let go of the trauma in your body, generating those thoughts that are in obsession and repeat and never get relief. And I promise you, if people say to you, oh, you need to talk this out for the next two to three years, I've met people 40 years later who are still trying to talk it out. And these people look like they're 130 years old. Because they have cemented over and over and over, I'm a victim. They have kept generating within their own beings and their bodies and their hypothalamus has been creating the peptide chemicals that are about resentment. They are about betrayal. They are about victimization. They are about infidelity or whatever it's been, the obscene, insane things that narcissists do. And the cells of their body are getting the ke chemical amino acid chain peptide of resentment, of infidelity, of betrayal, of victimization, of annihilation, invalidation, all those horrible, horrible chemicals that every time your cells receive a hit of them, it literally hurts because these chemicals are nasty. They're not like chemicals of love or inspiration or expansion or peace or warmth or joy. They're beautiful ones that are beautiful and healthy. They're the ones that give us uh, nutrition. They open up our cells to be able to assimilate and receive nutrition and oxygen. The toxic neurochemicals, the peptides that are associated with continuing to live in the inner identity of this is what's happened to me are disgusting. They actually smash down the ability of your cells to be able to assimilate nutrients and oxygen. You literally are making yourself incredibly sick. So your cells start breaking down. You start aging. Your body starts gathering toxins, which means you get overweight or maybe you can't eat. So you start, you know, <clears throat> you start losing muscle mass and health and your skin gets, you know, sick and dry and saggy and it's awful. And, of course, emotionally and mentally you're spiralling down into anxiety and depression and panic attacks and CPTSD, which is horrific, and you don't realise that by staying stuck in the story and your inner identity saying over and over and over and over again, this is what happened to me, this is what I am, this is what I deserve, this is what my life is, you know, that story is making you sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker and you're literally getting addicted to it which is why you feel like you can't stop doing it. You might get on an abuse forum and everybody's competing with their war stories about what happened to them, which is absolutely not what we do in the Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Forum that we have. Or you might be going to your therapist and your poor therapist, this is why. You know, I've had so many therapists over the years recommend the Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Program to their clients. We have doctors, therapists, and we also have abuse domestic violence workers from all over the world who recommend NARP to their clients. We get so many people that come and say, my doctor or my therapist or recommended this. The reason why is because somewhere in their practice, somebody got on the Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Program, walked into their office, and it had a shift. They're no longer in the story. They're no longer banging on. And I, at the start, when this got unleashed on the world and it took off so fast, I had clients and therapists contacting me saying, my client has been in the story for two years. And then last week they walked out and they were out of the story. What happened? 
and they'd been working the program for three nights, three nights, and we're out of the story. In starting recovery, true recovery, they turned inwards. So I really want you to understand that, of course, you think by talking it out and talking about it and sharing about it is going to help you. And at the time, you get some relief when you're doing it, but then you walk away and you haven't got resolution, you haven't got closure, you can't stop going back over it, and you need to keep doing it again and again and again and again and again. It's because you're addicted to it. You are literally addicted to it. I want you to understand this. The cells in your body that are getting specific peptides, they have what's called receptor docking points. Every time your cells split, they create twice the amount of receptor docking points for particular peptides that they're used to receiving. So let's say you've had the story about the betrayal that the narcissist did to you and you share this disgusting thing that they did to you and what happens is that chemical signal, sorry, the electronic signal from your brain hits your hypothalamus, your hypothalamus creates the peptides of betrayal that come down into your cells, your cells get their hit, it feels disgusting but they're addicted to it like they are to heroin and every time your cells split and re reproduce, they have twice the amount of receptor points to receive the peptide betrayal. Now they need more, which means that your brain is going to think about it twice as much. So as time goes on, you're not getting out of the mess, you're digging yourself further into it until you discover a process to turn within and bypass the brain, get into your body and short circuit that peptide addiction, get it out of your body and heal it. It has to be healed at that level. Does that make sense? Yes, spirit love, it has to be about you, not the psychopath. A hundred percent. And it happens very, very quickly. You start unwiring that addiction when you know how to. And that's what my processes are all about, okay? Those of you that are stuck in that. Those of you that are stuck in that. Okay. So the constant, let's just recap. Learning everything about narcissists doesn't work. Keeps you disconnected from healing you, okay? Staying in victimization doesn't work. It means that you're just going to generate more experiences and more feelings in your life that match victimization. Sharing what happened to you over and over doesn't work. It cements your inner identity into being a victim and it cements your peptide addiction that is not causing you to evolve. It's creating you to dissolve. It's not helping you integrate. It's creating you it's 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 meaning it means that you are going to further disintegrate can you understand why these things don't work and the crazy thing is so many people will tell you they do work but they don't and experience has shown us over and over and over and over again they're not working and that's why we think we can't heal, we think we're defective, we think there's no hope for us, we think we're hopeless, we think we're useless. It's just we're not healing the right way. That's all it is. And it's not your fault. It's not your fault at all. Okay, now mistake number four, another huge one, trying to avoid your pain with activities and distractions. Wow, how huge is this? And it's been a part of our human programming. Remember when we were little kids and, you know, we were really hurt or upset and our mum or our dad, thinking they were doing the right thing, would say, don't think about it. Go get your colouring book or they try to distract you or, you know, go play with your friends, right? That's what, because that was what they were taught, bury your emotions, pretend you're not hurting and just get on with it. But I want you to understand this. Trauma is very faithful. It's like homework. 
and it's like housework. Really housework more than homework. (laughs) It's like housework. If you don't clean it up, it just piles up. Trauma is negative, dense energy in our body. And it's not like you can go to a doctor and he goes, well, you've got 20 pounds of grief in there. Okay. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. And if you don't deal with it, it just piles up more and more and more and more. I want to give you this analogy. Imagine if you're driving your car and the engine starts making really weird noises. Now, none of us with half a brain would continue driving the car, turn your radio up and start singing to ignore the noise and just hope it's going away. Any of us with a tenth of a brain know that our engine is eventually going to seize or blow up. And it's just like if we were sitting in our lounge room and it was raining and the roof starts dripping. Would we just put a bucket under it and ignore it and just keep watching TV and do nothing about it? No, because we know we're going to have a much bigger problem that really could destroy our house. Yet we've been taught, we've been taught, and we've been told that when we have emotional trauma and inner pain, to just ignore it, get on with it. You know. Now here's the thing: when we have significant emotional trauma, our inner being is screaming. It's feeling despair, or it's feeling uh, anxiety or depression. And all of those things are our inner being screaming out for us, not a piece of chocolate cake, not two hours of social media or three hours of Netflix or just sleeping it away or half a bottle of wine or 30 cigarettes or a shopping binge or running back to the narcissist trying to stop the pain. Our inner being is screaming out for us. Your inner being is screaming out for you. Now, I want you to imagine if you had a five-year-old that you adore and this little girl or boy ran up to you and said, Mom, Dad, the kids hate me. I'm, I'm, nobody likes me. I'm all on my own and I just, you know, and was crying and, and destroyed. If you pushed that child away and you said, shut up, I don't want to listen to you, go away. I'm going to go eat the chocolate cake. I'm I'm watching Netflix because I don't want to listen to your rubbish. I'm going to drink this bottle of wine or actually I'm just going to ignore you and I'm going to run off to, you know, have sex with somebody. How would that child be? Be really honest about this. How would that child be? Well, that child is either going to scream his or her head off, which is erupting trauma, or he's going to give up and curl up in a corner and be catatonic, which is manic depression, or gravitate between. Or that child will have a tantrum which really is about self-sabotaging you, those times when you hate yourself. That's the tantrum. And it's all because you haven't turned inwards with dedication, devotion and love to self-partner to say, sweetheart, I'm here. I'm going to hold you. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to be with you. I'm never leaving ever again. And I love you unconditionally as you are. And together we're going to sort this out. Imagine if you were to turn inside and give that child this level of devotion and you're not going to judge them, you're not going to be disgusted by them, you're going to say it's perfectly understandable, sweetheart, with nobody coming that you would feel like this and I'm never leaving you again. That's the thriver way to heal. And I want you to know this, CPTSD is not what somebody did to you. What it is, is there's so much trauma inside and nobody's coming, meaning you. 
And I know I had CPTSD, agoraphobia, fibromyalgia, a complete psychotic adrenal breakdown. I was 80 pounds. I was told I would never recover and I would need three antipsychotics for the rest of my life. And I healed completely medication-free. Why? Because I turned inside and I said, sweetheart, I'm here and I'm going to do everything I can because I knew it was an inside job. So our distractions don't work. Just like our roof caves in with the water leak, our engine blows up with the car, it's the same with ourselves. And we've been taught that it's disgusting, that we can't turn in, we can't face our emotions, we can't, you know, and then we're not prepared to feel the bad ones and you cannot heal what you're not prepared to feel. And then all of a sudden, all the good ones are gone too, all of the good emotions, and we're not living, we're not a human in our body, and we're not connected to humanity and life in human ways anymore. We are completely separated from ourselves, which means we're going to be separated from life and others, and then we're trying to survive our traumas and live our life, which is crap. That's not recovery, all right? People say, well, I'm a survivor of narcissistic abuse. I've been a survivor for 20 years. I'm not interested in surviving. Surviving's not living, okay? Living is thriving. And so within, so without, it's quantum law once we come home. And you know that beautiful child, that five-year-old, those of you who are parents, you know as a mum or a dad, what you really want to say to that child is, I just wish I could take this pain away from you. Well, as thrivers taking radical personal responsibility, working with quantum tools to heal our inner subconscious being, we can, we literally can take the pain away. We have got the power. We are coded to be able to load up the trauma from ourselves, release it back to source, and then fill the space where the trauma was with source, which can heal what we can't heal, the infinite mind. And we reset back to who we are without trauma. We have the power and the ability now. That's exactly what my work and my healing processes are about. So we can, you know, whether it's sadness, whether it's grief, whether it's obsession, whether it's resentment and anger, all of those feelings are so valid because horrible things have happened to you. They are completely, completely valid. But you are able to target the trauma in your body, generating those feelings to be able to load it up, release it, bring in source where they're gone and you are free. We have that power now. We've always had it. We probably just didn't quite know how to do it. Okay. All right. So, you know, somebody's saying to me, if you say you're a survivor, it means you're going through what you've gone through and you built yourself back up. To me, because I understand thriver recovery as opposed to survivor recovery, many people in survivor recovery, they still got post-traumatic stress disorder. They got away from the narcissist, but they're still battling with their symptoms. Thriving, which is what we do in this community, means that you are free of your symptoms. You're up-leveled to beyond even who you were being even before abuse because you cleaned up those unconscious parts of you that weren't self-partnered, that weren't self-loving, self-accepting, weren't streaming source through you as you weren't able to show up in life with great boundaries without the fear of crap, criticism, rejection, abandonment, and punishment for being yourself. And you no longer have the little unconscious quirks and things that made you very susceptible to narcissists. So you're free to be yourself in your power, in your body, in life. That's thriving. It's hugely different to surviving. And that's what I'm an advocate for, that we didn't go through all this. We didn't go through the bowels of hell to not be able to experience the glory of heaven. Truly. There was a reason for this. That's how I feel about it. Not how I just feel about it. It's how I live it, how I teach it, how I propose and invite people up into that opportunity. Okay. 
there's a huge difference. Huge. Do you have, let's just go over those four points again. Just let's touch on them and go over them again so you get very, very clear about the four easy to make, most common mistakes people make when they're trying to recover. Mistake number one is trying to learn everything about narcissists. Mistake number two is holding onto the victimhood. Mistake number three, going over the stories of injustice to anyone who will listen, including therapists. Mistake number four, trying to avoid your pain with activities and distractions. Those are the four biggest mistakes and they're the four things that you really think you should be doing. It's counterintuitive to learn a different way. But the thing is, I remember when I came to, well, when I surrendered and I saw the truth and had an epiphany and then that was the end of all of that for me and I turned inwards. Thank God it saved my life. At the very edge of losing my life, I had about a pontinth left. In fact, I'd given up. I was contemplating how to end it. I was planning how to end it when that happened and that saved me. But it didn't just save my life, it gave me my life. And that's why I am so incredibly passionate about sharing this stuff, the Thrive Away to Heal, because it works. It works. All right, Willow saying, can you repeat that, please? It was so powerful. I'm not sure which which it was that I said, Willow Way. I love, Faye, how you just said, let's thrive, not just survive. Exactly. Mere survival is not good enough after this. It really isn't. All right, this is your time for any questions at all. We've got a few minutes, maybe about 10 minutes. Um. What if it's not one narcissist but hundreds of abusers? Claire, that's perfectly fine. It doesn't matter because, sweetheart, fundamentally it's all about us. It's about the traumas we've had in our body that are co-generating experiences that are not our true self and our true life. It doesn't. I had had dozens of abusers and people in my life as well. I promise you we've had people in our community They have never known anything but narcissistic abuse, recover and become thrivers and completely have a relationship and life trajectory that bears no resemblance to their past. This is a complete reprogramming and a shedding of the trauma. So it doesn't matter whether it's one, 10 or 10,000 narcissists or 8 billion, it doesn't matter. Oh, the one, two, three, and four. Okay. Listen to the recording, honey, because yeah, it's um it's 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 all there. It's all there. Okay, so Kathleen is saying, I see I've seen I have a fear of no longer thinking about my narcissistic mother. A fear of no longer thinking about them. Okay, well, ideally what you want to do is to be able to purge them so that it's not your reality anymore and there's no guilt, there's no fear of that, and that's what the healing pr- produces. That's what NARP produces. You don't have the feelings of guilt or you don't have the feelings of loss because you can clear all of those. They're all traumas as well. Yeah. When you say you talk about past wounds with people who will listen is a mistake, I need to ask why because I've just tuned in. Go back, watch this, okay, because this will be on YouTube. Go back and watch the whole presentation because it will really help you understand. I know it seems counterintuitive, but when you listen to this, you'll get it. You need to hear all of the four, okay? Pam is saying, my ex just ended our three-year relationship by just disappearing. What the heck? Do I just keep the things of his that I have or just keep them unless he asks? Okay. All right. And narcissists can do that. They can go missing in action. They can do whatever. I would just pack them all up, put them aside and you know, look, if you've been going through a narcissistic relationship, well, ideally you want to end it, just send them on to somebody he knows and get them to get in contact with him. Okay, Willow Way, you're going to re-listen. That's good, beautiful. 
Okay, I'm just going over and over and over what they did to me. Kathleen Gaelic, I think you've been in our community for a long time, sweetheart. I think I've seen your name a few times. Honey, it's time to do the inner healing. Do you know, we have so many people in our community that they could have been, I just did an interview with uh, actually our MTE general manager and she was in the community for three years before she started the inner work. And I know of so many people that have, when they've started doing NARP and they start getting out the trauma and they bring in source and those obsessive feelings and repeats just melt away, they're like, why didn't I just do this at the start? Kathleen, I can't recommend enough, sweetheart. Just, it's your time to heal. Get on NARP. All right, so we do have Violet here. Why do I feel more sick after shifting, like more sad, more depressed a day or more after shifting? Why is that sunshine? Because there's another trauma underneath you need to get up and out. You need to keep going till you get down to a zero. And then if it triggers, it's just another trauma under that that needs to be released. Released. Just keep going. Also, come into the NARP forum so that you can reach out for support. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm just seeing if there's any more. Yeah, sunshine. That's it. It's just another trauma coming up. You haven't got it all out yet. Just breathe. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. You don't want to give up five minutes before the breakthrough. And often that's the case. It's like, oh God, this has come up. Yeah, because I need to shift this one out as well. And there might be another two or three under it. And then it's like, oh my God, I made it. Like I'm through to relief. It's gone. I'm filled with source. It's that that one I'm working on is gone. Okay. A King, would you say after coming out of a narcissistic relationship, you can feel as though you now have narcissistic behavior yourself? Does this stop once you're fully healed? Thanks for your help. Thank you for being so polite, A King. Absolutely, you feel like you're narcissistic because this is a thing. When you're hanging out with sick people that are infiltrating you and violating your inner being, you get sick. And we all looked in the mirror and went, oh my God, I can't believe some of the things that I said and I did. I promise you, every single one of us questioned whether or not we were a narcissist because you really don't like yourself. I promise you, when you start healing, absolutely that goes. There's only two, there's two differences between a narcissist and a codependent, which we can just say is the victim of a narcissist, because you've got this toxic relationship where a narcissist is getting narcissistic supply by sucking your life force, your resources, and your attention. And us as the codependent, we're trying to get love, approval, survival and security from a false source rather than breaking away, healing ourselves and going to true source for it. So both are codependents in a toxic exchange of trying to suck each other's energy. This is the two sides of the magnet. Now, the only difference is two differences between a narcissist and a codependent, which is them and us. The only two differences is, is we have a conscience right? And we really don't. Our nature is not to hurt and use people for our own benefit. That's the first difference. So this is why narcissists can do things we could never imagine doing. And they plot and think in ways that we just can't because they don't have a conscience or empathy or care. We have a conscience, we have empathy, and we do care about people. And this is why it feels so disgusting for us when we're in things that are just, and we're being horrible. We really hate it. To them, it's normal. That's why they can be so cool and calm in it and just get on with their life and get out of bed because to them, loose and negative dark energy is what feeds them. It's not what feeds us. The second difference is This is the only thing that's different apart from what I just told you. The other thing is, is a narcissist will never turn inwards to take radical personal responsibility for their wounds to heal them up, to stop the narcissistic behavior. They won't do it because they've killed off their inner being, put a false self and ego in its place, and that's their identity. And they will not let that go. They won't let it go. 
right? Us, the only difference is we will turn inwards to take radical personal responsibility for our broken, traumatised, undeveloped parts to heal them up, to get out of our codependency for seeking false sources of love, approval, survival and security rather than healing that between ourselves and source, our higher power consciousness, the universe, life force, true source. We will do the work and get out of all of those toxic programs, but they won't. Am I making sense? So, of course, you behaved in ways that are needy, desperate, triggered, angry, disgusting. We all did. But you're prepared to do something about it. You're prepared to heal and never, ever be living in those realities again. Does that make sense? Spirit love, you don't see Melanie typing. That's Violet typing on my behalf. Imagine that. Maybe I'm doing it with my feet. I'm good at multitasking in that way. <laughs> it's Violet. Violet's so beautiful. She's uh, she's she's my events um, right hand woman. Comes into all of my wonderful you know seminars and everything, all my programs online and helps out beautifully. Yeah, there she is. Hi, guys. Yeah. All right. Does this make sense? Is this helping you? <laughs> Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. It's the woman behind the curtain. The difference is this is a this is actually a real woman with a real heart and real power, not like you know the metaphoric little man behind the curtain, which is the the narcissistic twit pretending that they're you know all powerful and they're actually not at all. All right, all right, okay. I think okay, unless there's a pressing, unless there's a pressing question. No, I really hope this has helped. I wish I could see some more testimonials. Daya, please um put up uh Violet, put up the link to testimonials. We have a ton of testimonials. We have so many testimonials. Yeah, we have so many testimonials. And then the other thing is too, all throughout our social media, you know, go through it. Have a look on my blog. So many NARPers are always there posting. These are real people, of course. Go on Facebook, go on Instagram. You know, th- you'll see it here on YouTube. Like there are people who are NARPers who will tell you over and over and over and over again how amazing it's been for them. And the other thing is too, with NARP, you have a complete money back guarantee. There is zero risk and you can pay it off for a very small amount monthly. You get the full program and the full support from the Global NARP Forum, which is the best minds in narcissistic abuse recovery in the world. You have full access to that. You don't have to do this alone. You get it straight away. So there is zero risk. We take, and you don't even have to give us a reason if you don't want to have the keep the program. You get your money back. Okay. So isn't it better to, well, the proof is there. The proof is there. Also, to go on to um, you can go into Site Jabber, which I think is uh, a global review company. I think that I'm number one therapist in the world, humbly. So you'll see so many reports there, so many reports. Yeah. And, you know, you're with thrivers, you're with people. True seeker, you won't be wanting your money back, trust me, LOL. Look, occasionally, you know, some people do. They're just not ready or, you know, they're hanging on to the victimization a lot, which I understand. You know, once upon a time, if somebody had said to me, take radical personal responsibility and look at how you've been co-generating this and what you could heal, I would have wanted to slap their face. I was so stuck in my victimization and in my righteousness. I, you know, I needed to be brought to my knees with no way out but to turn within. But I hope um, you people don't. I, I, you know, that's one of my biggest missions is to say to you, 
you don't have to get to the point where you're nearly dead, which was where I was. You know, there is a straight line out of this that is powerful and fast and so supported. You know, back in the day when I was trying to heal, there was nothing. There was just meds, abuse forums and psychologists and talking about your problems. There was no inner, deep, powerful quantum ways to heal. There was nothing. And back then, I would have crawled across a paddock of glass I would have crawled across two acres or two, or four hectares or one ec- whatever it is. I would have crawled across that if somebody had said to me, on the other side, you can get better. It's not that I didn't try to get better. There was no way to get better. Now there is. There really is. Yeah. All right. I love all of you. Thank you so much. How do we deal with narcissistic politicians? Yeah, Clement, (laughs) absolutely. We're going through a lot of global narcissism at the moment and it's the same thing. Empower yourself, be sovereign, be without fear and stand up, you know. And there's a lot of people doing that in really amazing ways, which is what our life is calling us to do at the moment. Okay. All right. I love you. I love all of you so much. Thank you for joining me today and I hope that you know what? I am just going to recap really, really quickly before I get off. All right. Our four mistakes. Mistake number one, trying to learn everything about narcissists. Mistake number two with our healing is hanging on a victimhood. Mistake number three, going over the stories of injustice to anyone who will listen. Mistake number four, trying to avoid your pain with activities and distractions. And the remedies to all of this is to turn inside and heal for real from the inside out. Okay, that's how we get out of wrong town into right town. I love you all so much, everybody. Have a beautiful day, afternoon or evening and I'll be seeing you again soon. Thank you, Violet, for all of your help as always and thank you, everybody, for being here. Love to all. Bye-bye.